All right, I'm going to do a quick demonstration on, on extracting shop drawings from a full SketchUp model that was made with the TF Rubies. First thing you're probably going to want to do is go and make a timber list and print this out so that you can check off these timbers one by one as you've made your shop drawings for them. Some other things you want to do to prepare is to go to your settings, go to the dimensions, set that to a really small font and set, the, set up the rest of the dimension lines the way that you want them. Do that before you start extracting the shop drawings because all these settings will be inherited by the shop drawings when you make them. All right, to actually get a shop drawing going, you right click on one of the timbers, say TF make shop drawings, and it'll do something that looks like this. Uh, just make sure that it looks okay, and then we're gonna save it. Now I've made a separate folder for it called shop drawings. You can see, uh, you know, it's a subfolder of the of the main folder, and I'll just save it there. Now it went back to the main model, and one by one, you're going to go through and make all of those drawings. Once you've done that, we're going to open up that file that we just saved, and we'll put the dimensions on that. I'm just going to make this a little bigger so you can see it a little better. So these look like 2D drawings, but if you orbit the screen, you'll see that they're not. They're actually um, 3D drawings, but I've turned off the, the camera, I turned it into parallel projection, and if you go to standard views front, you can make it look like 2D. Now, these are supposed to be all four sides of the same timber, but these drawings are not actually identical. If you look closely, you'll see that, uh, you know, here's a, a mortise, here's a profile view, the other profile view, because we're in x-ray mode. But it's missing up here. You're not seeing it from the backside. I removed those because I think those are confusing. So these models are not quite identical. So what we want to do is put enough information on here so that you can take this out to the shop and transfer this onto the actual timber. Some other things to notice, uh, the name of the timber is marked up here. I put north, south, east, west, top and bottom, so that you can put that on the timber so you can keep track of which side you're laying out and just where it goes in the frame. The other thing to notice is these little triangles here. Those are your reference faces. So you want to make all of your measurements off of those faces. Uh, pink is just a color code. It means don't sand that face. That's going to be to the outside of the house. If you see khaki, I don't have an example of that, like a light yellow. Um, that's just marking a reference face. Uh, the actual surface of it, but that is a face that shows, so you do want to sand it and make it pretty. So when you're setting these timbers out in the shop, you might want to, you know, if there's a big gouge or something or an ugly face, make, you know, align it so that that's one of the pink faces. All right, the tool we're going to be using mostly is this dimension tool. And you use it so much that you're probably going to want to map a hotkey to it. But basically, you touch a point to start, you touch another point to end, and then you drag it off the timber so that you can see it. I've chosen a small font, but when you print this out, you'll be able to read these. Uh, depending on how many dimensions you plan to put on here, it can get pretty crowded. That's why I went with a really small font. I'm just taking my critical landmarks and going down to the bottom. Um, if you want, you can drag it off this way instead. It's just up to you. If you find things are getting crowded, remember these are just regular SketchUp drawings. You can grab a bunch of stuff and uh, move it down to create some more space for yourself. Now, let's take a look at this housing here. It's one inch deep nominally, but here's the reference face on this side. So this is really important. Uh, you should not be going from here to here and measuring it at one inch. Instead, you should be going from here to the bottom of the timber, right? This is the reference face. So it really doesn't matter how thick the timber is. What matters is that this housing is nine inches off of the reference face. So that's how I've marked it. Peg holes aren't as critical. So those I might not worry too much about being off the reference face or not. Now when I zoom out, watch what happens to this too. The font size is fixed. You can see how it's kind of getting uh, oops. realign this. Um, you can see it kind of got squished. 
So one thing you can do is you can right click it and move the text position to be outside of that so that um, when, you, when you zoom out, it's still legible. But again, that's such a handy trick that you probably map a hotkey to that. All right, how much detail you choose to put on one of these depends on how familiar you are with the drawings and who's going to be cutting it and whether or not they, uh, the person that's cutting it is, is really familiar with the drawings. So when I ran a professional shop, I didn't necessarily put the three and the five and the, and the eight on here. The guys in my shop pretty much knew, were really familiar with these. And, and I didn't have to put very much detail on, mostly just the major landmarks, the distance from the, uh, from the bottom would be enough. And they could, they could figure out the rest. But you may want to uh, put more detail on than that, and that's fine. You can spend as much time on these, putting as much detail as you want. And if you forget something, you can always go back to the computer and look it up. So. Uh, you might also want to mark the depth. That's a seven inch mortise. I'll often use the uh, note tool to do that. Um, the text tool, rather. You can just make a seven there to show that that's seven inches deep. Um, otherwise, you can choose to Know, to mark it here, whatever makes sense for you. And again, if you've got the peg holes here, I wouldn't go. Ahead, I wouldn't put them over here. They're the same. You can transfer them over. So uh, maybe you want to mark that width. But again, notice that I made these two, four, six off of the reference face, not off of this face. Everything's done off the reference. that. Probably want to mark this. I'm not going to mark this as being a two inch shelf because that's not the reference space. This is. So it's eight inches left. Put as much detail as you want on there and then save it. And then when you've got them all done, you're going to probably print out every single one of them. And you can kind of use that as a checklist to make sure that you've got every timber completed. Good idea to have someone check your work. You might want to have the person that laid out the timber initial it, and then the person that checks your layout initial it too. So that's just a, a really brief rundown of making shop drawings with the TF Rubies.